very warm welcome both of us to this webinar of K2 Systems. Today we will introduce our flat roof system, the Dome V to you guys. Um, my name is Marco. I am Ronnie. Hello and welcome also from me. Yeah, we're very happy. We have a lot of participants today from, as I can see, from all over Europe, probably also from worldwide global countries. So we appreciate the interest. Let's see what we have for the next half an hour. Um, we will introduce um, in theory our system to you. We'll introduce um, the MAD-V with better friction coefficient. We will have a look at the system structure and all the components in detail. We will do that first um, viewing a couple of slides and then we switch over to see the actual parts that are lying behind me here on the table. Um, in the end, Ronnie will show you how to plan a system in our uh, planning software based on, which is, by the way, free of charge. You can go to our homepage and just um, uh, register to use the planning software. It's free of charge. If you have any questions, um, you can at any point uh, use the chat window to type in your question, or you can also raise your hand and we will open your microphone. So, a couple of slides uh, to introduce the D dome V and the S dome V, both have an inclination of 10 degree. D dome stands for double inclination, that's what we can see on the left hand side of the screen. And here you can also see the V shape of the dome, which gives the whole system the name D dome V stands for double and S dome V stands for single. So usually the single elevation is towards the south direction, so also south fits very well to S dome. A quick summary, what we have here we have uh, with our flat roof systems we are now within the fifth generation and here in this evolution step we modified the geometry completely so we tried to make the parts smaller more lightweight and of course to reduce the cost in the same in this in this very same matter uh, it is a short mounting rail system with integrated ballast trays. That means that you don't need any additional components to place the ballast. The rail that we use here has already um, the ballast tray integrated, so you can place all the ballast stones directly into the rail. Very new also for the system is the flexible EPDM support pad which has this honeycomb structure, which we will see later on, uh, to compensate tolerances and um, yeah, to, to compensate the load, the wind load on the system so that it, this load won't be transferred to the rooftop. Um, lower transport volume reduces logistics costs. That means that um, a lot of parts here in this new system are um, designed so that they are possible to be sent out with a very small package. This is very important um, as a lot of customers are overseas or are planning and realizing projects probably in a remote area. Um, so it is possible with this system to have very small packaging dimensions and to transport them to any place in the world. And then the pre-assembly and the final assembly will be done on site. Of course, last point, aerodynamically optimized based on wind tunnel tests as usual. We see here uh, a close-up of the different parts. We work on the bottom left side with the mini clamp. You probably know this clamp from our system, the mini rail. 
It is a universal clamp which works from frame dimensions 30 to 50 millimeter, so very universal. You only need one clamp. Then the rail, which is based on our uh, speed rail with additional geometry on the left and right side. It, it, uh, we can talk about wings that this speed rail has, so the ballast can be placed directly in the rail. Again, the EPDM mat and then the dome structure. Very similar parts also for the south elevation side. Of course, the wind screen, the windshield is an additional part here. We introduced the system the first time on the InterSolar this year. And in the meantime, we have realized a couple of projects. Uh, feedback is coming in right now. And if some of you, uh, dear listeners, have uh, already realized a project, I would be happy to hear your feedback as well. This is a um, 200 kilowatt system s -Dome B, and this one was a 700 kilowatt installation d -Dome B. All right, perfect. So this is it already regarding the theoretical part. Now we switch over the camera, hang on a second, then we go to the real parts. Okay, perfect. So now you should see us here on, on the table. Those are samples. So, of course, the, the parts are real. Only the rails, this is not the original length. It's just a small part. So to show, this is the mat. I think this is one of the most um, innovative protection mats that there is in the industry. It is pure EPDM, so very... Um, high value material and uh, protects the roof yeah. from our system. As you can see here, yeah, Ronnie, yeah. show it. What Marco mentioned before, uh, the honeycomb structure you can see in this small sample a little bit better. So here it can compensate the tolerances, uh, the movements um, which come from uh, thermal expansion. Yeah. So basically the, the roof is, of course, we, we look at the roof as a fixed layer and then we have this honeycomb structure and the whole system can, can move here a little bit, can expand with, with daylight and in night tide, nighttime when it gets colder, it will shrink again back to the position. Yeah, another big advantage of this new EPDM material is um, the friction coefficient is uh, better than the friction coefficient of our old um, construction protection uh, building protection mats. Um, you can easily see it here. Uh, it uh, moves only. And it has a lot of resistance yeah. to the load, the wind load that wants to move the whole system. And so this friction here um, will, will give a lot of force against this structure. Yes, and so, we have only one mat for all surfaces. Um, before we needed the um, aluminum um, added uh, protection mats, but now we only need one mat. Uh, there is no uh, danger for the for the surface of the roof exactly. um, coming from this material exactly so uh, in case you wonder there won't be any chemical interaction between this rubber material that we have here and the plastic foil on the roof and of course talking about the friction coefficient when we have um, a lot of force here and the friction coefficient is high the consequence of this is that we need less ballast in our planning. So a huge advantage that it brings with it. Yeah, 
this point, uh, I would like to mention our friction coefficient uh, measurement tool. Um, I highly recommend it because it, it can. It's it's a very good invest. It um, can save you much work and much money because if you know the friction coefficient, uh, you exactly know how much ballast you need. Uh, you won't be at a point where you buy too many stones and you won't have to bring all these uh, useless stones on the roof because you exactly know this is my uh, coefficient and so I need this amount of ballast. All right, then we start to assemble the whole system. First um, step would be to bring the rail together with the protection mat and the next point would be MK2. Yeah. Yeah. So, does he know what so the next step is the MK2. You probably know this one. It's um, a nut, a sliding nut that you just turn in like this and now it's free to be moved. Together with the M8 screw and I would like to point out that this is the only screw in the whole system. All the other parts are slipped in, turned in, or somehow moved in, but not need to be fixed with a screw. Hard to get apart again. Then I just use this one, no problem. So next Next step in the assembly is to fix this base part. Um, I put it in here and as mentioned this is the only screw that you need for the system. Same with the stone. You can still leave it loose a little bit then you can adjust it to your module size and then fix it and as a next step you just um, slide in these two parts, the actual what we call a dome, and now very useful, you can't put it in in the wrong direction. It's the so-called pokayoke principle, so you can't go wrong. It doesn't fit in this side, so I have to do it in in this position. And now um, sometimes in the middle of a module field, for example, you don't need a fixation here because the whole um, array is already fixing the whole thing but at the border you definitely need this little piece here um, you just click it in take this part again slide it in again and it will be fixed like this and what uh, what we saw before um, that the, the mat V is just um, um, getting the, the tolerances uh, from these movements here. Uh, these parts are very flexible, so uh, thermal expansion and shrinking oh again goodness. is, uh, is um, taken over, the forces are taken over by, by this flexibility. So we have the possibility to build a quite large module field uh, which reduces again ballast. Yeah. Again here the, the V shape, so mm, this is also a very important function of the system so that movement here can be compensated. So uh, then we have the, uh, this is the so-called, uh, we have a large dome and here of course we also have a small dome. So e exactly, so the module lies from here to there. And what Marco mentioned before, uh, we had only one screw here and for this part we don't need an additional screw. It's just um, fixed by the usage of the mini clamp here. Uh, now you can still move it and 
This is the imitation of our module frame. And as soon as we fix the, the clamp, so this part is fixed now. And that comes because of the geometry. Um, we cannot see it uh, from this perspective, but um, as soon as I fix the, the screw and the clamp, these two parts here go down and uh, this part goes up and so the, the, the item is fixed. Exactly. So quite a, quite a good invention. There's no screw necessary here. You just probably can see this geometry. So with this geometry we turn it in and that's it. So with, with this modular clamp you fix the module, but at the same time you also fix the system. So quite handy. Yeah, and what Marco mentioned before, um, maybe you know this clamp already from our mini rail system. It's the same clamp and it fits for all module sizes between 30 and 50 millimeters. One clamp fits all. Exactly. So all right, perfect. Then we go to the planning. Let's go. Uh, and plan a project in base on. All right. So let's start. Um, what you see here is our start page. Uh, when you go to the base on um, planning tool, this will be the first thing you see. And um, um, here you have uh, the latest information. So um, take the time and read what we what we tell you here, because then you will always always be up to date. You have uh, the newest information and uh, you can just click here and then you get to our home page where you can find several new informations. Um, after having done that you can dismiss the field and um, um, yeah can you can just choose the settings you like. Uh, we have different languages up here and you can also choose between the metric or the imperial system. So by this button I can just uh, open an existing project but now I would like to uh, start a new project. Um, one thing before we start is uh, this help function behind the question mark. Uh, also here you find several topics um, in text form or as a video. Um, just go through it. There are interesting um, topics and also quite much help um, to get to know base on better. So I, I dismiss it and then uh, we navigate always over these um, words up here. There is no uh, other button to get to the next page. So, uh, well, yeah, I go back again. I first have to choose new project. Okay, unsaved data in my current project will be lost. Doesn't matter. Now I can, no, didn't work. What happened? Ah, it's still loading. Now, uh, first thing to do is, uh, to enter an address where my project has to take place. I type in the street where we are now 
letzte Industriestraße in Renningen. Uh, I have several proposals here. I can choose the Industriestraße. And then I see my red pin here um, on the map, which is uh, a Google map uh, based um, picture here. So for your information, this is K2 Systems. We are here. So uh, as you can see, I typed in the Industriestraße here, but actually my project is not in the Industriestraße. It's up here. So I can navigate by using the mouse, scrolling in, uh, and this is where I want to plan a Dome V project now. Um, so, but as you can remember, my red pin, it was down here, but I can just get it here by double clicking on this building, and then you see that I have a new address up here. Of course, I can give my project a name. I can type in my name here, customer's name and the name of the contact person. Um, in Germany, we have the national attachment for uh, Germany. Uh, for projects in other countries where we don't have the national attachments for wind and snow load, you can use, uh, for example, the euro code or um, yeah, the code with a attachment of the country where your project is. So we go on, roof, I scroll in a little bit again, um, and then let's start by planning a, um, a little power plant up here. I add a new roof, it shall be a flat roof, it shall be rectangular, and uh, it's a flat roof, of course, with foil, bitumen, or uh, gravel. I cannot uh, choose something else here. As you can see, it's uh, light gray uh, in comparison to, to uh, these dark black letters here. So I click Add, and then first I draw my first edge of the roof. I click again, and then I finish my roof. Now I can type in uh, several parameters here. For example, the building height and the roof pitch. Let's say it's one degree. And uh, I have an attic of 0 0.3 meters. And my friction coefficient, uh, I measured that before with the tool I mentioned. Uh, and I measured a friction coefficient of 0 0.55 which is uh, an average value for uh, foil roofs. Uh, now we see a quite large obstruction here in the middle of the roof. So we go on to obstructions. Uh, we choose the rectangular obstruction. We will um, watch the other possibilities here later. Uh, and then I draw my obstruction. The first line you see is always parallel to the roof edges. If I don't want that, I use the shift key and then I can um, yeah, draw my obstruction edge apart from the roof edge. So this is my uh, obstruction. I can give it a height of 1.5 meters and a minimum distance maybe of also 1.5 meters. Um, and I can also show the shading on the 12th of December in this example. And then you see two things, but to have a better look, we switch to the 2D view now. And the 2D view opens uh, many opportunities. Uh, first, we see the, the mi minimum distance from the, uh, from the obstruction. And then we also see the shading. And only in the 2D view, we have the possibility to type in the actual value of the obstruction. Maybe we were on that roof and measured that. 
So it's 2.5 meters and let's say this is not 11.12 but 11.2 meters. Um, also when we choose the roof functions here again we can do the same thing for the roof. And to go back to the obstructions again, uh, we have another possibility here. We can not only, ah, okay, I have to choose the obstruction first. We can not only show, mm -hmm. Okay, I have to switch to the map view. Now something is not working. I don't know what it is. Okay. Um, from time to time, I save my project by using this uh, little disk button up here. Um, what I showed you before, is uh, by using this button you can show the, the measurements of the obstruction itself. By using this button on the left uh, you see the distances, fr distances from the roof edge. Maybe I measured these also before so this might be 10 meters exactly and this is maybe 6 meters and 50 centimeters. Okay, um, let's switch to the map view again. We see our roof now. How uh, We go to design and first we have the possibility to um, choose a module out of this list um, or we also have the possibility to type in the measurements of our module if the manufacturer of our module is not in the list. So then we activate the module array area and we add a new module field by using the plus sign. Uh, now we want to uh, choose one of our new dome V systems. Let's do the S dome V first and as soon as I click it uh, I only have the possibility of landscape module orientation and of an ele elevated system of course. It's not possible to click on the other um, two buttons. Uh, but I have the possibility to put on a module field on the whole roof, the complete roof, or a module field over a part of the roof only. But still if you want to um, have a um, field over the complete roof, I recommend to use the module field button here and then uh, place the module field over the whole roof simply like this. Why is that so? Yeah, you're just a little bit more flexible um, because you can alter uh, the, the module field easier later if you have some modifications. We leave it this size for the first moment. Yeah, now you see that it's calculating, that can take some time, so don't wonder, just uh, give the program some time to calculate. Uh, let's switch to the 2D view again, because we just see a little better. Um, now you see we have a thermal uh, gap here, and we can see that we have a thermal gap after 10 modules or after 9 modules. So the first thermal gap is here. If we put the button edit thermal gaps we see all the thermal gaps and we have only one thermal gap in this direction and we have one thermal gap in this direction. So let's just leave it like it is for now uh, and have a look to the results. 
but first we have to go to loads. In this case, because we have a project in Germany, the wind and snow load are calculated automatically because I typed in the actual address before. Um, the only thing I have to do here is choose the terrain cut category and now it's a uh, two slash three. Mm. So if we have a look here, uh, two is quite an open field and three is like a industrial area. So I would say we have a pure industrial area here so we can switch to three and then the uh, velocity is, uh, the pressure is calculated again. If we have a look to results, um, we see our module field, the obstruction and the missing module here. And if we zoom in a little bit, we have all these uh, green and yellow numbers or the numbers on green and yellow spots. Uh, these are the ballasts needed for our system. And as you can see, we have quite little ballast, 4.5 kilograms down here, and here it's a little more, 18 kilograms, and here it's even more, and here we have 42 kilograms. And of course, this is a place where I have only one row and a thermal gap, and a thermal gap also here. So here the velocity uh, pressure um, is quite high. So let's have a look again, uh, go back to design and optimize this a little bit. I do that in 2D view again. Uh, and I have two possibilities now. I see this is 12 modules in a row. So I could say um, I place it in the middle, for example, after six modules and then the thermal gap jumps from here to there. Uh, the other possibility, I will show that in this thermal gap is to modify this one uh, by activating the, the function, then clicking here until it gets yellow, and then set the little hook here and removing this one So now we still see that we have uh, shading here in December. Well, maybe it doesn't really matter, but we have the possibility to delete all these modules or the modules we don't want to have by using this little rubber sign. And by just clicking, I can remove all these modules if I want to. Yeah, then I deactivate this function again. <clears throat> um, and let's have a look what happened to my ballast values here. And as you can see, uh, the span width of the ballasts is smaller now. The highest ballast we can see down here is 18 kilograms. And we have that value, well, here we have 17, 17. So no more 28 or 42 kilograms as before. And we also see the thermal gap here and here. Um, what Marco mentioned before, one advantage of the new system is that we need less ballast and we also need less additional items for ballasting. Uh, before we uh, needed an additional item for ballasting from five, six, seven, eight kilograms, depending on the size of the stone, but now we can uh, put most stones onto the rail. Uh, you saw the rail before, it's much broader than the old uh, 
speed rail and it has these little wings so the ballasted are ballast stones are placed quite safely also on the rail um, you could if you want it alter this value this means that you can bring up to 20 kilograms on the rail without additional parts if you have a stone which fits on the rail and is 22 kilograms uh, so you could just type in the value here and uh, of course you also could do this for the uh, for the case if you have to use bead porters or porters so let's have a look to the summary uh, you see all the material you have you need um, and you now have the possibility to save the project in your account. You can also download the file, uh, maybe to send it to us or to send it to your customer or your colleague if you go on holiday next week and there have to be some, some modifications. Uh, just download the file, send it via email. Um, and you also have the possibility to print your uh, static report and choose which uh, topics, which parts shall be within the, the report. Uh, before we do that, we have to do another roof. So we have one roof now with 118 modules, but as we remember, there was much space for another roof here. So we go to this area. Um, now let's first give the roof another name. Um, let's say this is, uh, no, this is the office. Okay. And then we make another roof. It's a flat roof again, but this time it's not a rectangular, but polygon. We add this and start by drawing the first edge of the roof. And again, we have rectangular or 45 degrees. And to make another angle, I can do this by using the shift button again. A shift key. So but now I really want to have it rectangular. Um, yeah, I have to take care that I don't get too close to the other roof. And here I have to take care that I don't uh, don't get too too far in this direction because this what we can see here is not the roof but it's the wall of this uh, higher roof we we made before so in the end i can um i can make the the angle uh 90 degrees again by using the um the control key on the keyboard by double clicking my roof is complete as you can see here this is not uh, really on the edge of the roof but uh, don't worry this is just because um, the satellite pictures are not always um, yeah they, they, you have might have a little uh, disturbance there um, concerning the angle so again I can give my building a height 7.5 meters uh, roof pitch is one degree again. My attic is also 1.3 meters and the friction coefficient is the same. Um, a little trick for the obstructions. We have many obstructions here. Uh, I draw only the first one in this case. I give it a height of 1.5 meters again and I switch to the 2D view, check the measurements and type in the actual measurements 
like this. Let me go to the map view. And now I can duplicate this obstruction by using this button. One, two, three, four, five. And then I pull it to the, it's a little too big, but that doesn't matter now. They are all a bit, little bit big. But on the other hand, we will need a little distance from each obstruction after all. So we have two little obstructions here, but I will delete the modules concerned um, concerning uh, or in, in the area of this obstructions later. So I will paint another obstruction, but did, this time it's just a line from here to there, because there I have uh, the deepest point. So we have might have water there or dust. Um, and we don't want to have modules here. This obstruction has no height, but um, maybe I want to be half a meter away from it. So let's go to design again. Uh, now you have to take care. The second roof, uh, for the second roof, you will always be here on the module array um, um, painting or uh, modifying area, but first we have to choose a module again. So um, preset is again the first module in our list, but we chose another module before. We want to use this module again. So now we paint module field. Let's do a D-dome this time. Uh, again, I don't want to put it over the whole roof, but uh, use two module fields maybe. Uh, and on this roof, you will see that it's much easier to make several module fields easier to, um, yeah, because you are just more flexible. I will do my second module field again. Yeah, everything is right. So I can go to my obstruction. And when I switch to the 2D view again, and we see I have my obstruction here. And if I enlarge my module field a little bit, nothing will happen. There won't be any modules in this um, area here. So uh, two points I didn't mention before. One is the row spacing. There is a preset value of 2.13 uh, meter. Uh, this is the, the distance from beginning of this module. Yeah, I can scroll in a little bit from here to there. So with 2.13 uh, meters, uh, you have a little space between the modules uh, just for cleaning or something. Uh, of course, you can enlarge this um, value a little bit, um, but in cases it could happen that because of the larger distances, maybe you lose one row here in the end. That might happen. So you can also type a smaller value like two meters, but as you can see, uh, two meters and five centimeters is still the minimum possible uh, distance. But there you really would have no space to walk between the, between the rows. So you better choose a little bigger value here. The edge dis distance is also an important factor um, because we have um, mm -hmm. we have a minimum edge distance of 
0 0.6 meters it is uh, yeah you you have you have to build up the, the plant um, with this edge distance at least uh, because uh, the wind channel tests were made with this uh, distance and this is the, the minimum uh, necessary distance from the edge. You can of course give it a higher value, 80 centimeters, but it's not possible to type in a smaller value, gets back to one point, uh, 0 0.6 meters. Um, yeah, we have a question. Uh, the question is if we can um, give the modules another orientation, the D-dome uh, or also the S-dome. Uh, the D-dome usually is faced to east and to west. It's an east-west uh, system. And the question is if we can make it a north and south system. Yes, this is possible. I show this to you on the in, in the map view. Uh, and the thing we have to watch is this green line. The green line is, so to speak, your north. And you can alter it. You can give your roof another north. So um, all the modules will be um, uh, will be headed into another direction. Uh, for doing this, unfortunately, I have to delete my module field first by using this X and it's gone. And now I can, by using this M for manual button, all my roof edges get thick and then I choose my personal north. Now this is my north edge, so to speak. And then I can add a new module field. And now my D-Dome is not a east-west, but a north-south system. So yeah, we can better see that on the, on the map view. So I would also at this point, um, just a quick suggestion. It's very easy to compare systems at the same time. So now we have chosen D dome V. We can also choose S dome V and immediately the difference will be shown to you. So very easy. You can compare systems and see how many panels you can get on the roof. If you scroll down here, you see the module field information. It shows you how many modules are placed and what is the output power. These uh, 174 modules, this is, uh, this is the, um, the amount of modules in the first module field. Like now the first module field is activated. You see that uh, because of the white dots here. Now I activate the other just by clicking in. And then you see we have 100 modules here. Yeah. So 274 all in all. For, just to show it, go back to the D-Dome. So now we have 100 modules. Now we switch to the D-Dome. And you see we have 116 modules. So with this planning, uh, we are able to increase the number of panels from 100 to 116. Even though two are... are uh, standing by itself now. They are, yeah. they are completely alone there. We have an interesting message now. Uh, you have planned a single module array. However, the minimum array size is two connected modules. So two connected double modules, in fact. So if I switch to the 2D view, we can see what happened. We have one alone standing double module here. Let's just have a look what that means by uh, activating the addition of the thermal gaps again. We see that we have one automatically set thermal gap here and we have, uh, so because of that, we have one single module here, which is not allowed. So now we have two possibilities. We can put this thermal gap somewhere else 
maybe here. And remove this one. Now the problem should be solved. No single alone standing module anymore. Um, the other possibility, of course, would have been just to delete the module. But uh, in this case, we found another solution. So I would say let's go on and have a look on the static report. Um, we go over loads again, results. We see our ballast values again. They are quite high in this area. But uh, yeah, I showed you before how you can uh, modify or optimize the ballast values by um, moving the thermal gaps uh, into a better position. So let's go to summary. Uh, as you can see, I have given one roof another name, but I forgot to give the other roof another name. Let's just do this. Renaming. And so this is production. Okay. Let's go back to the summary. And now uh, we have one roof with S-Dome and one roof with D-Dome. Uh, so we have all the items here. You can also edit your bill of materials. And maybe you can say, OK, um, actually, I don't need the speed port because I have plenty of them in stock. And you can also add another. Uh, Another, uh, yeah, now I completely forgot what I wanted to type in. Here you also have some suggestions. Uh, maybe you need a, some Omega clips or something. Um, so apply the addition, and then you see you don't have speed porters anymore, but you added another item. So you see this is very handy that you have this bill of material. You can just uh, send it to us via email, for example, and we give you a price right away, what that means. Um, which means that you will get your uh, offer quicker when you, when you plan the project by yourself and then just send us the, the bill of materials uh, because um, you don't have to wait for us until we have planned your project for you. So those who plan by themselves, they will get the offer first, probably. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, as I mentioned before, we, uh, we save it again, and we have the possibility to download the, the K2 base on file on your computer. You have the possibility to generate a static report. We also want to know something about the horizontal and vertical loads, so I Put the hook here, generate. So what my colleague just did was first he downloaded the project file. That means um, it's the file with the, with the ending .k2o. It, it is a project file, so you can send us this file by email and we can also open it in base on and work on it. So we can exchange data with this uh, downloaded file. And the other one is the PDF file, I will which open is the PDF. a summary of what we just planned. So here you first have all your project uh, data, the address, the roof um, characteristics, the loads, and here you have your module layout. We see we have four module blocks. And uh, here we have, can see details about the module blocks. Measurements is 10, 10 meters, and here it's 860. Uh, and here you also see uh, which rails we must use because we have different lengths of rails in the uh, Dome V project. So 
this report is very important for the installers on the roof without this um, plan uh, it's could be quite difficult for them to to choose the rails uh, choose the right rails on the right place scroll down a little bit and then uh, next we have the ballast values um, here you can see where you have to put how many stones yeah so this is the, the kilogram values so you know exactly how many kilograms you need to put um, under each module and if you have uh, your standard stone then of course you can translate this kilogram number into your number of stones exactly um, then we have the the results uh, here we can see how many uh, details about the module fields like how much ballast is required and how much how how much all the um, all the system the system the whole system uh, how much it has how much it weighs yeah so very important um, information to the owner of the building yeah it means how much is is the weight of the whole um, of the whole array including the ballast yeah in some cases uh, you might have the restriction of not more than 0 0.2 kilonewton per square meters and then you can just have a brief look here and you see okay I'm under that value so everything is uh, is right I can I can place the K2s uh, under construction on the roof. Then we have uh, a little more uh, the calculation of of the of the static itself, and then uh, here the information for you that the calculation was successfully, and um, your system has been verified. In the end. Um, Ah, okay. Now, yeah, we have in this case uh, also the information about about, um, about the maximum pressures on the insulation of the roof, which might be important for your project. And um, after that, we only have the bill of materials, and then would come in this case the next. Uh, the next roof because we have two roofs now this was only the results for the first roof and here comes the second roof and in the end you have the bill of materials for the second roof and then the bill of materials for both roofs uh, with our uh, modifications here um, this bill of material uh, you can also download it as an Excel file by using this button. And with the Excel file, it gets even easier for us to uh, create your offer. Um, the last possibility I want to show you is the ballast plan. You can download the ballast plan as an Excel file too. And here you can, uh, for those who know how, uh, they can uh, count how many times a specific ballast value is in the project uh, for the Excel experts. I know that it works, but I don't know how to do it. But probably many of you will know. Uh, you can, of course, also use this plan for your string planning or something. Uh, and it uh, might be a help for you uh, for doing this. Exactly. You can use this Excel probably. You can work with it and draw in yeah. your string plan. Yeah. And the question that we have here right now, I don't exactly understand. Do you have CO2? CO2E? data for the system parts the footprint ah no we don't have this possibility 
what is it what does it mean footprint weight well the, yeah. the um, carbon oxide uh, oh uh, no I get values it. for the production of the parts or something okay now we don't have this possibility No, it's fine. Okay, uh, I think most of the questions we we tried to answer. One was also um, how to choose which porter is planned. Do we have the possibility to choose the speed porter or the porter? Yes, we do have this possibility. Um, on the results side, um, first I want to say about this topic uh, the the values between the modules like here this one or this one uh, they are placed without any additional material or with a speed porter but higher values like this one which are in between the 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 rails in the middle of the of the modules between the rails uh, this means that you will need a porter there um, so in the summary we will see a porter here for example we go back to results uh, then we can just remove the usage of porter and what happened also is that the value here 45 in the middle it won't be in the middle anymore but will be split on uh, on this place and on this place. So once you plant a roof, you can always click through the system and modify um, little things in the bill of material, for example. Or, or you can uh, check the bill of material after you modified something in your planning and see how it, uh, how it, um, how it uh, changes. And of course, the price changes with it. So this might be interesting to play around a little bit and see what is your optimum for this uh, project. Using a porter, for example, can also stiffen the whole uh, module array. Or in the other um, way, the, the porter might be a good option. So when you change here, the use, you can tell the system to use a speed porter or to use a porter and then just go to the summary and see how it changes. As you can see here, um, my modifications of the bill of materials from before, they are gone now because we, uh, we, we had an additional item here uh, and we deleted one item. But um, all these modifications have gone now because we changed something in the project. <laughs> Thank you for taking part. Uh, and um, I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed it. And um, I would say we are we will be online for some minutes if you, you have some you questions, ask questions we will still be here to answer it and um, if not thank you again and have fun using base on thank you very much take care goodbye